Welcome. For those who don't know me, I am Mira Rao, resilience and embodiment coach. And I am super excited today because I have a friend and colleague as a guest who's going to give me some of her time in a beautiful chat about some of her experiences in the world of essential oils and how these beautiful plants can support you in your own health, vibrancy and healing. And hopefully we're even going to be having a little dip into a chat about my favorite topics, using whatever we can to help regulate the nervous system and support childhood trauma recovery. My friend's name is Faith Teo, and Faith is certified as a, I'm going to grab my glasses and tell you, as a master NLP practitioner and a neuro-linguistic Enneagram practitioner and essential oil educator. For the past 10 years, she has been teaching people in Asia on how to use young living oils to support them in creating these lives and the health that they want. As a longtime eczema sufferer herself, Faith was introduced to Young Living Essential Oils and she was able to reshape her health with empowered choices instead of resorting to reactive measures. And now she helps other people do the same. Welcome, Faith. Yay, thank you for having me. <laughs> it is my absolute pleasure. I'm super excited about our conversation and how it might be of service to anyone who might come across it. And I just want to give a shout out to George Cow, who is the person who brought us together and made the introduction and his wonderful work as well in the area of authentic business and marketing. Let's talk about you and your own history. So what was happening? How did you become so passionate about oils enough that you then went and launched your own business venture in this area? Uh, okay, okay, that's such an interesting story. So I think for me, like even as a young woman, before I became a mother, I've always loved, you know, a good smell. So at that time, I didn't know any better. I would have gone to places whereby, you know, like anywhere that sells essential oil, I was just, okay, oh, this smells nice. Okay, let's use that. But interestingly, at the same time, right, I do have skin issues as well. I am a childhood eczema sufferer and I have eczema coming out here and there. The worst was when, I think way back in 2010, when I have it all over my face, it's swollen, it's red. If you see a photo of it now, you'll be like, oh, that's not face, doesn't look like her at all. <laughs> Wow. So actually, yeah, it was so it, it was so interesting because even though I love scents, I felt like at that time I couldn't use so many scents. Like I couldn't use perfumes; it would you know get me off to an itch, a scratch, you know, an allergy reaction, um, and you know just so just so many things that I basically stay away from. But how I got into this essential oil journey was when when I was suffering through my latest and worst bout of eczema it was on my face it was really bad because I had to like tell my boss who sits in Tokyo I'm in Singapore he's in Tokyo and say hey guess what um, and I sent him we were actually on webcam and I said look look at my face it's how bad it is right now I don't think I can work in the office can I just work from home because I have colleagues or even like my working partners in the bank and they go like, oh my God, what happened to you? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how scary I look like at the time. Um, so, I mean, I mean, going forward, right? At that time, in terms of health, I've always thought that if you are sick, you see a doctor, you get medication and then you get well. And to me as a person who loved my career in the bank at the time, I thought that, okay, you know, you just give me the medicine, just, just stop this thing, just, just stop it so that I can get my life back to normal. But I think now looking back, I'm so grateful to that part of my journey because it taught me so much about how true health is like, how do we actually go back to root cause and start to look at what we can do to shift our health from there. And that's what I did through my eczema as well. And that's also how I came across uh, Yellow Big Essential Oils. Given that the community surrounding uh, YL has also been about being proactive, has also been about that you take charge of your health, you make empowered choices as well. So I, I love the company. I love the products they have. And it was just so amazing that when I use the oils, right, I didn't have an outbreak. I didn't have that mm. allergy reaction. I think that really struck me for me that essential oils are not all made equal. They're also different also. Yeah, and 
just so happened that I actually, um, you know, tried one of the highest quality oils in the world, actually. Yeah. Mm. So it sounds like there was a combination, Faith. What I'm hearing and super curious about is that you already had this love of sense, which I think is quite natural. Probably many people can relate to that. Yeah. But the chemicals in them, you had a sensitivity as well as the actual healing properties of the oils themselves that you met once you yeah. started to make really good quality products. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think before I've known about Young Living and learning through my eczema journey, I never knew that there was such a difference in ingredients. So even let's say like if we put the oils aside, we talk about different ingredients in different like beauty care, personal care products, right? At that time, I, just, I never knew that like, oh, actually you want to be very careful about what goes into these products as well because some of it can have a long-term uh, side effect onto your skin, mm -hmm. even hormones too, even stress level, even neurological conditions as well. So what's been really very fascinating is that uh, some time ago, there's a study done on newborn babies. So you know the newborn baby, when the baby comes up, right? What the doctors did was that they took the you know, the, the, the ubica cord, they take mm -hmm. it, they took a sample and they realized that there were like, I think 278 toxins found wow. in the cord itself. Yeah. And this is from a pristine newborn baby. Wow. And that's how we realized that through the generations, through us women especially, because women, we love to look good, right? So the personal care, the makeup, mm -hmm. the hair care, we are also, if we are not careful about our ingredients, we're also exposed to exposing ourselves and our children, you know, down the line to more of such stuff that's lurking in our products as well. And that's how it gets into our body too. So I think that has also become part of my journey too, that sure, I can <laughs> smell good and I can look good, but I also want to make sure that I'm picking stuff that is safe for me and my family as well. Yeah. Mm. So I was curious about um, what had got you so passionate in the first place. So thank you for sharing your story. And then these additional pieces. I mean, that's just 270. Wow. Yeah. In terms yeah. of toxins. Yeah. So <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about what you see happen? So say you work with a client these days and you, it sounds like, you take them on a real journey around health and the oils is kind of one part of it, you know, a little mm. bit of mindset, a little bit of looking at low tox for the house. Mm. I'm imagining maybe there's a bit of looking at food as well in there. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you see happen when somebody starts to introduce good quality oils and use them as a part of their health regimen? Oh, for sure, right? A few things happens, right? So for, okay, so one thing that I do tell people is that when you get such a good quality oil like Young Living, every oil, besides having the physical component, it has an emotional aspect to things as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll give you an example. Um, okay, so let's say we talk about, uh, let's say, okay, there's this blend in Young Living called Purification. It's quite interesting because this blend itself, it has all the oils that you, that you wanted, to purify the air, to repel insects as well. But emotionally, it's also very good for anger. So that's also why it's called purification. And, you know, like I can think about many other oils too, like say, um, let's say like frankincense, like um, I think for many yoga enthusiasts, they, they can use frankincense as part of their yoga and meditation regime. If you trace back to like the Catholic times, right? The Catholic Church has also burned uh, frankincense resin in the church as well. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> if you look back into the Bible, there's also like a lot, a lot of references to different essential oils, different resins found throughout the ages too. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not a newfangled thing. It's really something that is really old school, you know, going way back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. that's true isn't it it's that whole like this that's really common in a lot of I guess wellness approaches these days that's just like a rediscovery and a re-embracing of very ancient methods I have the same with like understanding the nervous system it's like oh this is intu we're talking about intuition how do you feel in your body and what does it tell you about life oh in you know for thousands of years we've called this intuition now we call it nervous system regulation with that additional mm. layer of understanding science so I'm fascinated by this emotional component. 
mm-hmm. that you're talking mm-hmm. about. Do you have any stories? Because I'm, I'm thinking about this as we talk and as we talked mm-hmm. before we came on today, I'm passing the information, kind of chewing over it in the back of my mind of like, ooh, okay. So for myself as a practitioner, how would I integrate this? Myself as a user of essential oils, how would I integrate this? And that aspect of how does it interact with people's emotional experience is really fascinating to me. Do you have mm. any specific stories around it? What's that? Stories around it? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to hear something that you know you'd really witnessed and and how that kind of unfolded. Oh yeah, I have plenty of stories around that. So okay, so uh, so the so the oils that I refer to most of the time they are blends. So because for YL right, whenever they concoct different blends, they've also have intended that a number of it is to be used for emotional and mental health as well. So we can talk about this blend called Release. Uh, it's a very interesting blend. So basically, uh, like one of the things that I teach my people is that you know if you have some stuff that you're holding on. And, you know, it can be anger, it can be grief or whatsoever, right? Try putting it on your body. It can be over your chest. You can even diffuse it at night. Uh, You can also put it on your liver as well. The most amazing thing I've heard of is that, I I did have this experience, but I've heard so many of my people telling me the same thing. When they put it over their liver, right, they tend to get one or two reactions. The first reaction is that they started crying. And it's very interesting because... For some people, um, they may not have the opportunity to be exposed to other modalities that help them to work through whatever they're going through. It can be a loved one's passing. It can be some stuff that's been really hard for them during this pandemic. But when they put the oil on the liver, bam, you know, the stuff just starts coming out. And so I've know I've heard of two. So one was the crying, the tears starts coming out, mm-hmm. and that also facilitates healing as well as levels two. The other one is anger. So the anger comes out, it was like short spurts. And it is very interesting, especially in the Asian culture that we have over here. Because I mean, I don't know about you guys in Australia, but I know for us in Singapore and in Asia, right? A lot of times I'm hearing the conversation that it, 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 it never felt like the right time to express our emotions, you know. Mm-hmm. We are just saying over here that, oh, you know, don't be emo, you know, uh, cool down. Yeah, don't be emotional, which is, okay, I mean, for me, I love working with emotions. So to hear stuff like that, I'm like, oh dear, <laughs> that's super counterintuitive and counter helpful actually because mm-hmm. I believe that when we have that sacred space to express our emotions you know we are also able to facilitate healing for ourselves as well so I love it when always do that especially when you might have people at least in my in my community where they go like they're not sure whether they do things like meditation they're not sure whether they will go for something whereby they sort of unpack what's going on the layers underneath so because of that i found that essential oils like this helps a lot because at times not often but at times it's a quick like okay a quick review um i've also seen how different blends have also helped to gently shift the person as well i have a friend who's a paralegal so she works a lot uh, in, on contracts. It's a high stressful job. And she was just telling me that, you know, before I use this blend called transformation, I've always felt like it, I'm so quick to anger. Something happens, she will start to, you know, the temperature starts going up. Uh, her boss says something, she's going to flip already. <laughs> so I was like asking her, why don't you just try transformation? Just diffuse it at work or just apply it on yourself. And then it was quite cute because at first she told me that, um, nothing's really happening. Yeah, I'm like, no, you should go in journal. Then you find out how you really feel. So she actually keep track. And then one day she told me that it is so amazing because when she, now she looked back, the same thing that triggered her previously, now she'll be like, wait a minute, why am I angry again? Why, why am I jumping into this reaction again? So that blend transformation has helped to create that pause between the trigger and her usual default reaction so it was really cool to hear that from her actually that is really cool and um I hear a lot in that faith like I'm thinking about do you think it's maybe for people I'm thinking about applying that lesson across cultures you know you were talking about perhaps 
Uh, in mm. Asian culture, there's less familiarity and comfort with emotional expression or processing emotions. Mm. And to be honest, I think in mainstream Australian culture, yes, mm-hmm. probably not so much for our, you know, the people listening to this who are already interested. But I do know, for example, what I was thinking about when I was listening to you was that I have clients sometimes who might have like an intellectual awareness about Mm. the need to feel and their emotions, but they're a bit blocked. They can't quite get it out. And I've seen similar things happen, for example, with yoga, and then finally people get to release. But I can imagine it would be a really nice, I don't even know, gateway holistic practice <laughs> oh, yeah yeah thankful yeah <laughs> yeah he was so sweet he was like trying to feed me <laughs> so cute um like an easy access into beginning to use modalities like you said perhaps there isn't that access or that openness to mm. other modalities and that this is one that's also nice and portable i wanted to show yeah. you that your beautiful gift oh. Yeah, you got it. Great. I got okay, it. Okay. So I've been, um, I've got, for those who are listening, I have two blends from Faith, Release and Peppermint, which I specifically mm-hmm. requested because I need a little bit of focus <laughs> now to help me. How does the peppermint smell for you? Beautiful. And I'll tell you a very interesting story over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell is, me is the story. Is it super, uh, sure, is it super minty for the one that you have right now? Or it's more sweet and mild and herbaceous and doesn't quite smell like peppermint? Second. The sweet, mild, herbaceous, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll tell you a very interesting story about it. Okay, so basically for peppermint, it's a bit of science under, uh, behind this as well. So peppermint as a plant, right? Actually, the aroma of it changes throughout the season itself. When the weather is really hot, okay, when it's really hot, the mental levels in the plant goes up. So when they harvest during that time, you get your super minty and chilling, cooling kind of peppermint there. The kind that when you apply, you be oh, uh, you're just jotted to awakeness. You know, it's like, it's like someone's just splash cold water over you. Yeah. Now, when you actually harvest it during the milder months, right? So that is like closer to autumn, okay? When the weather is cooler. It, it, it also depends where it comes from because we used to have peppermint from India where the weather is really hot. So that gives us a very super minty and mentholated peppermint. Mm. This one comes from USA itself. So it's from Idaho. Yeah, weather there is a lot milder. So it becomes more herbaceous and sweet. Some of the people tells me that it smells like a chocolate chip cookie for some batches. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing about, you know, when you get great quality essential oils, the smell changes and some of the color changes also over the seasons because mother nature is not cookie cutter. You know, you get different kinds. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? I was just thinking, I'm glad you made reference to mother nature because thinking about how that connection through the scent and the story, the beautiful story you've just told us, it's not just to the smell, but to the place and the land and the experience of the yes. land, the reaction yes. of that plant into its environment, you know, mm-hmm. and that kind of that idea of the plant's adaptive system. Oh, it's mm. created all this menthol because it was super hot where it was, you know, so yes. it, it needed to stay cool to survive in yes. another environment. Oh, I can chill out being a bit more sweet and yeah whatever yeah. it is that needs to happen so I wanted to actually bounce off that topic a little bit what are the primary things so one of the things I wanted you to talk about a little bit uh, mm. because this week I'm going to be running uh, a webinar on overcoming procrastination and using mm. trauma recovery tools and looking at the relationship between that but one of the big issues that people come to me with and talk to me about when there is trauma or dysregulation in the nervous system is a difficulty in focusing. And Mm. so I was, hence why I pulled up the peppermint, but I was curious on your thoughts or what you've seen happen with people of how they can use uh, essential oils to support something like Mm. that, having energy, having clarity, having focus. Mm. Okay, so I think that, um, so I'll talk a bit more about the single oils. So oils that people can 
uh, can use it for, for that aspect, right? I really like the citrus oils for that. The citrus oils like lemon, berries, orange, uh, tangerine. If you run the whole range, there's also like grapefruit, yuzu, mandarin, jade lemon, so on and so forth. And lime, lime is also very nice too. Uh, I love the citrus oils because they have a very clarifying and sharp scent that helps a lot to anchor the person to calmness and also helps to boost memory as well. One of the things that maybe people might not realize in general about citrus oils is that they're very cleansing too. So generally, it's really good for immunity. It's also really good for getting the gunk out of my body. So like you see, like right now, you can probably hear that I'm a bit nasal. I have a bit of phlegm that's stuck here because I've just recovered from COVID last week. So lemon will be Glad one to of hear. my oils too. <laughs> so lemon is actually one of my go-to oils to help to like clear that off, help to decongest and to break that down too. And I also find that for the brain, it's also very helpful in promoting that clarity as well. You know, so I think most people would love lemon for that. You know, I personally love orange because I find that orange, right, it's a very sunshine and cheerful kind of scent. And it also brings a lot of cheer into, um, into the environment as well, whether it's the, like for the family or is it at work too. So I also really love that as well. In the, in the Muslim culture, because like in the Asian cultures, like we have seasons where we are also looking at like, um, like communing with the spirits, you know, and also cleansing and purifying as well. So in the Muslim culture, they actually use the lime essential oil. Traditionally they use black pepper and lime fruit, black pepper, herb and the lime fruit to, to purify. But now they have the oil. So some of my Muslim friends actually use these oils to help purify when they have like say it, it, it can be like say you have a colleague at work who's kind of toxic and you're feeling like drained after that you know like there's an energy vampire going on you know or it can also be that um maybe it's like your kids come back from school they have a hard day at work and they're still having the remnants of the energy from the previous environment. So citrus oils are very good in helping to clarify and to cleanse that off as well. Yeah. So kind of like pulling out like different uh, culturally, like the different uh, oils or herbs that each ethnic would do also in terms of cleansing and purifying in that sense. So not just like cleansing, it's like a cleaning environment, but energetically cleansing it as well. Yeah. That's... Awesome. And makes me think about, I started taking some notes because as I shared with you before we did the interview today, when we were last chatting, one of the interests for me personally is how do I support people in the emotional trauma healing and cleansing is mm. a great word, you know, and mm. releasing process. And I heard you say a few things that really got my attention about the citrus oils in particular of kind of being sharp enough to kind of bring you into your senses, yeah. improving a memory and also bringing clarity into the circuits of the brain. And I thought, wow, like I had a little light bulb moment because you were telling me this and I thought I can really see that because and I'm actually going to, I'll update you because I have, um, mm -hmm. I have some clients this evening after we, you and I speak and um, I might test some of this out and see how we go in using it to support. But the, because some of what happens with trauma, right, is this dissociation is being out of the body. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then we go back and we might reclaim, you know, a memory or a, a childhood memory might emerge and there might be some inner child work that's done around rescuing that aspect of ourselves from that time, bringing it back into the present moment. And then the clarity, being able to make a new story, you know, being yeah. able to make that make sense and move forward. So yeah. I have two questions for you. One for sure. somebody like me, that's more on the practitioner side, and then somebody maybe that's beginning their healing journey and has an awareness around their, uh, their need perhaps for some healing work, some deeper emotional mm -hmm. healing work. What, mm. Where would you advise someone like me to start as a practitioner? And where would you advise someone who is maybe doing their own self-healing stuff to start? Mm, okay, okay. So I think for a practitioner as in like 
what oils will support you in your role as a practitioner, right? I think that, um, so having, having served in some capacity as a coach, I think one of the things that is so important personally for me is to also like, for myself personally, it's like, is to come into a space of being grounded and in alignment for myself. So I think one of the oils that I would actually suggest for that, and you'll notice I keep suggesting blends, um, is because this will really customize to serve that particular purpose or intention. So one of the I would actually suggest, right, would be valor or even grounding to have us come back to center to ourselves, you know, to have us come clear to what we are about, you know, where, how are we connected and how do we serve our higher purpose, our life purpose as well, you know, through our platform, through our business too. Um, I love harmony, especially for that. It is very interesting. It's not a scent that I particularly like, to be honest, but I've also realized that through my own body reaction to it, right, I've also noticed that this is where I'm probably out of alignment as well. So I use harmony for quite a bit of chakra work too. And I notice that so often, because I speak so much and I do so much, you know, like hard work, um, so often I realize I need to pay more attention to my throat, my heart, and sometimes my solar plexus too, because of this work that I'm doing. So I personally found valor, grounding, harmony to be great for practitioners. Uh, transformation is the oil that I suggest for everybody. You know, as long as you are doing like, I mean, everyone's who's working, you're having important relationship. To me, transformation is such a great, like a navigational guide. Like, hey, actually, you know, this is where your best self is at. Come, let's, let's go this way here, you know? Kind of stuff. So it's a bit like a best friend oil for me. Um, for people who are actually wanting to facilitate healing for themselves, right? I think. Personally, for me, right, mm, healing for themselves, uh, I actually really like frankincense quite a fair bit because to me, frankincense and lavender, to me, these are the two oils where we call adaptogens. Okay, so adaptogens are basically oils that are like what you need it to do, it will do that for you. So, so many things are covered with these two oils actually. So, I actually love frankincense for that. I think if I do suggest not oil for healing, right? Hmm, I think for me it will be back to release again. Yeah, because I think it's such a very visceral reaction when like when you know like yeah, like what you said earlier, like, people like, oh okay, I'm trying to understand how do I get there. But then you have these bottles when you smell it and you're like, okay, what happened? Because you know, somehow I kind of found a way through. Yeah. I love that almost as a way to, yeah to circumvent the blocks that can come up when we start to go in a little deeper and using that idea of smell. So what I, I love this as well. Like each plant has such specific properties and benefits. And it sounds like the hard work, you know, picking a blend, it's re really making more sense to me as I, as I kind of hear you yeah. speak. Yeah. Yeah. Picking the blend that's really going to do all of that for me. Do that thinking about, okay, these are the plants with the properties that are going to really support that process. And mm. that idea of as the practitioner holding that, you know, I really yeah. like that you pointed that out that, oh, you might want to take grounded and then mm -hmm. maybe you're going to take transformation or release and offer that to your client, you know, as something yeah. that they can and I actually did this in a session I was thinking about you the other day with a client I had the release ready mm. next okay. to her so that capacity to even just the simple act to be honest faith of doing something sensory you know holding the bottle in your hand actually smelling is so wonderfully centering for somebody that yeah. is perhaps having you know the, the inklings of some kind of trauma response or trauma energy being felt mm. in their body or something they might not something even just strong emotion that let's face it most of us don't want to have to feel right <laughs> <laughs> yes I think most of us just want to like okay can you just get this back over we so can move on to the next step you know I just want to like some people once like I mean from at least the people that I talk to they want to get to their abundance they want to get to their result their success but they didn't realize that part of getting there is to do the work here 
you know, they just want to like, okay, let's, let's just stop staying here, let's get there. <laughs> So Kalina was just very interesting to see, actually. Yeah. Beautiful. And I love the idea that being sensory with the oil can just bring you to here and then support the system to do its mm. thing to mm. wherever you're going. Mm. Faith, this has been an absolute eye-opener for me. I was curious to see because I've just, you know, through knowing you and I've always been a little bit like yourself, like interested in oils. Mm -hmm. kind of a bit more from that hippie background oh I'll grab my lang lang and my patchouli and my lavender mm -hmm. I've often used lavender you know for the relaxation and tension but I'm I'm really excited about this capacity of really tailoring you know of understanding well what am I experiencing right now mm -hmm. and so you know for me looking at it through that kind of emotional nervous system lens what am I experiencing what is my state and I heard you, I wondered if this would be a tip that you might offer to people. If say someone was like, oh, I'm a practitioner, I'm going to use some grounded or I'm doing my self healing, mm. I'm going to go to release. It sounds like that additional tool of the journaling to help bring awareness and observation yes. to what was happening really amplified and supported that process. Yes, 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 it is. It is. I think so often for many of us, we are really in our heads, really in our heads and disconnected from our body. So I mean, the, the simple act of just, you know, inhaling deeply from the essential oil bottle or even putting it on our hands, rubbing it and just cupping and just inhaling. I feel that it really connects us back to our body or at, at the very least through at least two senses that we have, you know, um, the touch and, you know, the, 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 the sense of smell as well. So to me, it's just a simple and elegant way of bringing us back to where we are. Rather than, okay, you know, it's going somewhere and then we're like flipping off to somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So if somebody was curious about learning more and wanting to begin a bit of a journey, supporting their healing journey or their health journey, mm. how do they get to know you? Where do you put information, educational information where they can learn a bit more from you and find you online if they wanted to ask some questions or learn more? No problem. So they can always go to, so if they're on, <clears throat> if they're on Facebook, they can go to my Facebook group. It's called Let's Add Oil. And then you see a bracket, Young Living. Uh, I've been teaching there for years. I think that's about eight years really. So all kinds of stuff around different essential oils, even like the essential oils infused supplements as well. I put the information up there so people can actually look through, search through, dig through the materials and stuff like that. We have covered so many fascinating topics, like one of which that I've covered some time ago was like, you know, what is a switch spot? That when you press, there's a switch spot to your, your nervous system, your emotions, everything is just there. Another one was actually, I talk about like, I used to have this cough that was like, over so many years now, and nothing helps, Med no medication helps. I was using essential oils for respiratory issues. It didn't help at all until I realized that, oh my God, it's an emotional cause. I wasn't speaking my truth. And that's where, you know, like every time when I'm holding myself back from saying my truth, the cough comes out because it's one thing to get out of me. So I think it's just, I mean, I think using essential oils and constantly learning and reflecting through it, has been a very amazing journey for myself, but also for people around me too, because it gets us to understand more about ourselves too. Yeah, so I remember that call was just so funny because I was like, okay, there was something wrong with my lungs. Maybe there's more in the house or whatever. <coughs> Been to doctors and stuff like that. No, everything's clear. Until I'm like, okay, maybe it's emotion, and it is, it's emotions. Um, so, yeah, so... We have the Facebook group for that, you know, so anyone is free to come in, take a browse, join the group, you know, it's free for all actually. If you want to reach out to me, I'm also on Facebook as well. You'll see me in that group most of the time posting stuff and sharing um, information. I'm also on Instagram as well. So my handle there is Faith in Flow. Um, that one I kind of like talk a bit more about um, intuitive business, having women to get out of overwhelm and connect to their joint business and also some stuff about essential oils too. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to put all the links to that below in whatever platform it is that this is going out on and mm -hmm. anyone can uh, access you through those. And I'm really looking forward to myself coming and learning a bit more from you. Okay. Thank you so much for your time today. I've really enjoyed our conversation. 
I've Me really too. felt moved by the depth of your passion and knowledge and just how wide reaching this tool can be. You know, your last statement there that this is a tool for getting to know yourself better. It's a really, yeah. really beautiful thing to know. So thank you so much for your time today, Faith. All right. Thank you, Ra. <laughs> thank you.